Let's take a quick tour of the universe, and as we go along, we'll take advantage of scientific notation to get a better idea of the powers of 10, or the orders of magnitude that are involved. Beginning with Earth, our home, it has a diameter of about 12,742 kilometers. And if we want to write that out in scientific notation, we would just say that's 1.27 times 10 to the 4 kilometers. Likewise, the moon has a diameter of just under 3,500 kilometers. And again, for the sake of demonstration, we can write that out in scientific notation as 3.47 times 10 to the 3. Let's zoom out even farther. And instead of 10 to the 4 kilometers, we're going to make a rather large jump. This is the actual distance between the Earth and the moon to scale. And now we've jumped a full order of magnitude. So we've gone from 10 to the 4 kilometers to 10 to the 5th kilometers. And as you can see, the Earth and Moon are pretty far apart from one another. There's enough room to easily fit all of the major planets of the solar system. So let's zoom out even farther. The distance from the Earth to the Sun is about 150 million kilometers. So that takes us to 1.5 times 10 to the 8th kilometers. We haven't gone one order of magnitude, we've gone three orders of magnitude. This distance is known as the astronomical unit, and it serves as a kind of measurement standard within our solar system. As a matter of fact, we'll step up one more order of magnitude that takes us out to the orbit of Neptune, which is at about 4.5 billion kilometers from the Sun. And you notice we've gone from 1 AU to 30 AU, so we've actually increased an order of magnitude of astronomical units as well. Now, the farthest possible extent of any object in the solar system orbiting the Sun lies at the outer edges of something called the Oort cloud. It's really just a cloud of primordial or dirty snowballs. In other words, comets. And nobody knows for sure just how far these comets can be from the sun and still remain in orbit, but some estimates put the radius of the Oort cloud at a, anywhere from 50,000 to 200,000 astronomical units. Remember, we're talking about the radius. We're talking about the distance from the sun to the outer edge of this sphere. It's also worth noting that the distances between each of these snowballs is extremely vast. In fact, they're about as far apart from one another as Earth is from Saturn. So there's no way you would actually see these comets from this vantage point. We're turning up the brightness knob to let you see these comets. Yeah, it's pretty far away. Anywhere from about 7.5 times 10 to the 12, that's 7.5 trillion kilometers, to as far as 30 trillion kilometers kilometers, or 3 times 10 to the 13th. It's pretty far. As a matter of fact, we can start to even think about the amount of time it would take a beam of light to travel from the sun out to one of these comets. It turns out that it takes light the better part of a year, maybe even a little over three years, to reach the outer edge of the Oort cloud. So we're talking light years. A light year is on the order of about 9.5 trillion kilometers. Now the Sun is just one of a local group of stars that form our interstellar neighborhood. Many of the stars here are stars you may already be familiar with, such as Sirius, Wolf 359, Tau Ceti, and so on. The closest star to the Sun is Alpha Centauri. Now it's at a distance of about 4.3 light years, or putting that into perspective, at least 40 trillion kilometers distant. Now, I'd like to introduce a new term of distance that we often use in astronomy to indicate the distances between stars. This is called the parsec. Later on, we'll learn how we define a parsec, but for now, it's enough to know that a parsec is equal to about three and a quarter light years. The interstellar neighborhood, and indeed, Every star that we see is really just concentrated into a kind of a backwater region of the galaxy called the Orion Spur. It's not even a full spiral arm. We're just kind of living off the galactic main line somewhere. This is, of course, the Milky Way galaxy. And it's home to about 400 billion suns and has a diameter of about, well, about 100,000 light years across. 
Jupiter. So this is a massive jump from the interstellar neighborhood, three orders of magnitude, taking us all the way up to nine and a half times 10 to the 17 kilometers. So about 32.6 kiloparsecs in diameter. Now, the Milky Way is one of the two largest galaxies of a local group of galaxies called the Local Group. It's not the most exciting name, but there it is. Now, the perhaps the largest galaxy in the Local Group is the Andromeda Galaxy. It's at a distance of about 2 times 10 to the 19 kilometers. So now this is two more orders of magnitude. In terms of light years, it works out to about two and a half million light years, or 2.5 times 10 to the 6. So we're at almost 800 kiloparsecs from Earth. The local group is just one tiny little clump of galaxies belonging to a much larger complex called the Virgo supercluster. And the Virgo supercluster spans a diameter of about 10 to the 21st kilometers. So a few more orders of magnitude greater. In fact, when you think about this in terms of parsecs, it's easier to just convert now to megaparsecs, 33 million parsecs across. The Virgo supercluster is one of several nearby superclusters, and it turns out that all of these superclusters are a great complex called Laniakea. Laniakea is Hawaiian for immeasurable heaven, and this gravitational relationship was discovered fairly recently, and it's about five times larger than the Virgo supercluster. So we thought the Virgo supercluster was once upon a time the biggest structure that we belong to. No, we in fact belong to a far larger structure, Laniakea. But everything that we see, all galaxies that we see in the entire sky, they are as distant as 10 billion light years from Earth, or about 10 to the 22nd kilometers. And astronomers estimate that there could be as many as 100 billion galaxies. And if you think about that for a second, each galaxy has on the order of about 100 billion or 10 to the 10 stars. So 10 billion stars times 100 billion galaxies gives us 10 to the 21st stars total. There are more stars in the universe than there are grains of sand on all the beaches on Earth. Yet every one of the galaxies lay before something called the cosmic microwave background. It's the leftover radiation from the Big Bang itself, and it represents our cosmic horizon at a distance of 10 to the 23rd kilometers. Now, we don't know for sure what lies beyond this region, but it's extremely likely that the universe just keeps on going and going. In other words, the observable universe stops at the cosmic microwave background, but there's almost assuredly an infinite universe beyond. And speaking of infinities, it no longer makes any sense to invoke powers of 10 at this point. It's infinite. If the universe is truly infinite beyond what we can see, it's entirely possible that there are pockets within the universe that big bang themselves into existence all the time. And perhaps some of them have their own laws of physics or they're just slightly different. In other words, maybe what we think of as our universe is really just a vast hyperdimensional multiverse. We don't know this for sure, but it actually makes the most sense when we start to think about really difficult, tricky cosmological problems. And so, if we want to consider our cosmic address, we would have to write a fairly lengthy address. We can start with our basics. We know that we live somewhere on Earth, which is, of course, part of the solar system, which is part of the Orion Spur of the Milky Way galaxy, which resides in the local group of galaxies, which is part of the Virgo supercluster, which is part of Laniakea, and that is found somewhere in the observable universe, which is somewhere inside of the infinite universe, which perhaps may be part of some hyperdimensional multiverse. Space is big. <laughs>